Good evening. A good evening, is it? You fellows would call the end of the world a good evening. If the bloody sunset were covered with literal human blood spilt and shining, you would still be standing there as solid as ever, looking out for some poor, harmless tramp whom you could move on. You policemen are cruel to the poor, but I could forgive you even your cruelty if it weren't for your calm. If we are calm, it is the calm of organized resistance. What? The soldier must be calm in the thick of the battle. The composure of an army is the anger of a nation. Good God! Did you learn that in school? <laughs> no. What education I had was very rough and old-fashioned, I'm afraid. Why did you join the police? For much the same reason that you abused the police. I found that there was a uh, special opening in the service for those whose fears for humanity were concerned rather with the aberrations of the scientific intellect than with the normal and excusable though excessive outbreaks of the human will. I trust I make myself clear. Uh, no, not at all. How is it that a man like you, in a blue helmet, comes to be talking philosophy? You have evidently not heard of the latest development in our police system. I'm not surprised at it. We have been keeping it rather dark from the educated class, because the educated class contains most of our enemies. But you seem to be in exactly the right frame of mind. I think you almost might join us. Join you in what? I will tell you. We believe that a purely intellectual conspiracy would soon threaten the very existence of civilization. That the scientific and artistic worlds are secretly bombed in a crusade against the family and the state. We have formed a special corps of policemen. Policemen who are also philosophers. It is our business to watch the beginnings of this conspiracy. And what do you do then? The work of the philosophical policeman is at once bolder and more subtle than that of the ordinary detective. The ordinary detective goes to pot houses to arrest thieves. We go to artistic tea parties to detect pessimists. We have to trace the origin of those dreadful thoughts that drive men to intellectual fanaticism and intellectual crime. Do you mean that there is really as much connection between crime and the modern intellect as all that? You were right when you said just now that our ordinary treatment of the poor criminal was a pretty brutal business. I tell you, I'm sometimes sick of my trade when I think how perpetually it means merely a war upon the ignorant and the desperate. But this new movement of ours is a very different affair. We deny the snobbish assumption that the ignorant are the dangerous criminals. We remember the Roman emperors. We remember the great poisoning princes of the Renaissance. We say that the dangerous criminal is the educated criminal. We say that the most dangerous criminal now is the entirely lawless modern philosopher. Compared to him, burglars and bigamists are essentially moral men. My heart goes out to them. They accept the essential ideal of man. They merely seek it wrongly. Thieves respect property. They merely wish the property to become their property, that they may more perfectly respect it. But philosophers dislike property as property. They wish to destroy the very idea of personal possession. Bigamists respect marriage, or they would not go through the highly ceremonial formality of bigamy. But philosophers despise marriage as marriage. Murderers respect human life. 
They merely wish to attain a greater fullness of human life in themselves by the sacrifice of what seems to them to be lesser lives. But philosophers hate life itself. Their own, as much as other people's. How true that is. I, I have felt it from my boyhood, but could never say it. The evil philosopher is not trying to alter things, but to annihilate them. Yes, the modern world has retained all those parts of police work that are really uh, ignominious and oppressive. The, the harrying of the poor, the spying upon the unfortunate. It has given up its more dignified work. The punishment of powerful traitors in the state and powerful heresiarchs in the church. Oh, the moderns say we must not punish heretics. My only doubt is whether we have the right to punish anybody else. I don't know what you're doing, but you're wasting your life. You must join our special army against anarchy. But still, I, I do not quite understand. I know as well as anyone that the modern world is full of lawless little men and mad little movements. But what is this anarchy? is a vast philosophic movement consisting of an outer ring and an inner ring. I prefer to call the outer section the innocent section. The inner ring the supremely guilty section. The outer ring, the main mass of their supporters are mere anarchists, that is men who feel that rules and formalities have destroyed human happiness they believe that all of the evil results of human crime are the results of the system that has called it crime. They do not believe that the crime creates the punishment. They believe that the punishment has created the crime. They believe that if a man seduced seven women, he would naturally walk away as blameless as the flowers of spring. They believe that if a man picked a pocket, he would naturally feel exquisitely good. These I call the innocent section. Oh. These people talk about a happy time coming. The paradise had a future. Mankind freed from the bondage of vice and the bondage of virtue. And so on. And the men of the inner circle also speak to applauding crowds of the happiness of the future and of mankind freed at last. But in their mouths, in their mouths these happy phrases have a horrible meaning. They are under no illusions. They are too intellectual to think that man upon this earth can ever be quite free of original sin and the struggle. And they mean death. When they say that mankind shall be freed at last, they mean that mankind shall commit suicide. When they talk of a paradise without right or wrong, they mean the grave. They have but two objects. To destroy, first, humanity, and then, themselves. That is why they throw bombs instead of firing pistols. The innocent outer circle are disappointed that the bomb has not killed the king. But the inner circle is happy. Because it has killed somebody. How can I join you?